most of you, if not all of you, know Rich. Rich has uh, been with us before. He's got quite a few different clinics and he's put on uh, all across the country, conventions and such. So we're glad to have you here today, Rich. Thank you. Thank I you. did spend... Uh, uh, forwarded the information to Pete up in Traverse City that I was doing this and that uh, you guys were doing this afternoon. I don't know, maybe snowbound and he might sign in, but. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he comes. So the we'll snow's see. supposed to stop up there in about 29 minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it would be good uh, for the presentation for everyone to mute their microphones. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Ron. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Well, anyhow, uh, as you said, my name is Rich Mahaney, and I do get all over, and I have lots of clinics. Uh, I am uh, doing this one for you guys today. I do it next week, Friday night, for Division Six uh, for their group, and then I'm speaking uh, next a uh, week after next in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, at the RPM meet there, which I did a couple of years ago. I got four or five, I think five presentations there on Saturday. And then uh, in April, I go to Santa Rosa, California area to present six clinics at the Pacific Coast region out there. And then I'm with Andy and the rest down in Indianapolis in May, uh, doing some stuff on Zoom and uh, her Vancouver, British Columbia in May. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to Nova Scotia in June. And then I've got some stuff in British Columbia in September. And um, I backed out of St. Louis this year because we have a wedding that we have to go to. And uh, so, yeah, lots of different things going on and stuff like that. This presentation came together kind of a funny way and then we'll get it started. I, uh, I had to go speak in Bismarck, North Dakota this spring it was for the or uh, for the uh, um, with Thousand Lakes region convention up there and I stopped to see a friend of mine in Iowa and uh, and visit their layout there the um, just like that I can't think of the name of it in um, in Iowa on the eastern side but anyhow as I was walking through I was looking at this plant that they had uh, Tom Pursoon is his name, Hawkeye Model Railroad Club. And uh, I looked at this plant and was taking some pictures. He said, you like that? I said, yeah. I said, it kind of looks like maybe it was an auto plant or something. He goes, yeah, that's what it was going to be when we started, but now it's going to be something else. And I took pic more pictures of it, you know, coming from the other direction. And I, all the west of the way from um, Coralville, Iowa, up to Bismarck and then coming back from Bismarck, I was thinking about that and the plant and the doors and the shipping of, of uh, auto plants and stuff like that. And there's another big example I'll share with you that comes from Mexico City, Missouri, where I was involved with a club there and they have a huge Ford plant that's about, uh, well, the plant's the width of a two by four, but it's about 24 or more feet long. And they've expanded it. I'm supposed to go to, to Missouri in, in April and I'm going to have a tour and take some more pictures of the expansion. But it those two things led me to sort of rethink about how we do things, how we make things, how, what's the operation of this, how does a railroad service this, how does just in time fall into all that, and, um, and various things and some of the different things that you can do to increase your operations, uh, probably make your operators mad because there's more details to do, you know, they got to do this or do that at the plant versus just dropping off some cars and picking up some cars ahead and on. And so I just kind of packaged it into a clinic and did it for the first time in Rockford, Illinois last uh, November for the Rockford uh, group over there. And they liked it and um, kept adding a few more slides. And it's, it's a good hour long and I hope you guys will like it. So let me see if I can get it up here on the screen. So... Let me see, I've got the presentation open, share screen. Uh, that's not the right button. Okay, there's the presentation. I don't do this very often. I'm always the guy who's kind of controlling. So you get this. Uh, and I am in division nine. Okay, so the presentation is up on my screen. And I'm not hearing you guys say it's on your screen. It's not yet. Okay. So back that down. So, so I have to click on share screen. Correct. Once oh, you there it is. I find it. I found it. Good deal. We got you. Okay. There we go. I was just 
looking to the wrong place there. So, okay, let's get this opened up on there. How's that? Full screen? Excellent. Okay. So there's the title. And uh, understanding how stuff is made, how the railroad supports that with car placement, just-in-time deliveries, modeling industries and operations and things like that. And we're on our way. So uh, there's a variety of other operational industry kind of clinics that I've done for years. And these are just kind of a list of them. So, you know, I borrowed from these different clinics, uh, ideas and thoughts, but this is just another one. Probably uh, one of these days I'll have 10 different uh, industry slash operational uh, uh, clinics in my uh, library and stuff. So topics of discussion, whoops, back up. Uh, making products, again, we'll look at solids, liquids, and gases a little bit. That's something I've kind of capitalized on that we, instead of saying stuff, no, we do it with solids, liquids, and gases. We need to think about assembly lines uh, and you need to do a lot of research about how products are made in the assembly lines and where do things go in what order for what you're making. Door and dock designations we'll look at, incoming stuff, outgoing stuff, uh, uh, just-in-time deliveries, the waste stuff leaving the plant. And I really am emphasizing research, 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 because that really will teach you. You figure out what the plant makes, go look it up on the internet, find some different places that talk about that, how they make the thing that you're going to make at your plant, and then that'll give you a lot of good guidance there into uh, what's going on. So again, just you know, really emphasizing that concept. So making stuff, uh, again, solid materials uh, transported in a variety of railroad cars, and it could be all raw materials. It could be partially made things or parts that are used in the assembly. Uh, liquids are gonna come in tank cars or intermodal containers. It may be in tanks on the plant property, uh, or could be actually uh, products that we nurse out of tanks, uh, tank cars, or intermodal containers. So we'll look at that a little bit. Uh, gas materials are tank are transporting tank trucks and you, or tank cars. And you know, say don't say trucks because we're model railroaders, but they do come in trucks too. And again, the concept of uh, they may be stored at tanks at the factory. They may nurse off the trucks or the tank cars at the factory. But the point is, is that the it's you know one of that solid, liquid, and gas concept. Then we've got all this outgoing products that we've made here for the different things. It's got to get transported. And then one of the things we don't think a lot about is outgoing waste materials. So, okay, not everything is consumed in the production of products. So some of it becomes waste that either is going to go to a landfill or it's going to go to some other recycling facility, or it may even be going to another facility where it will be burned or, or used. Uh, out of the steel mills, we get uh, spent sulfuric acid that goes to someplace else it doesn't they don't mind that it's been used to wash steel once it's okay or hydrochloric acid or a lot of flammables that are off spec from plants uh, end up at uh, asphalt making plants or cement plants where they are burned and that's all they need is something that burns and uh, so you're able to get rid of things so how do we move that and then the storage of stuff at the plant all right so i show up at the plant with a box car i unload it where does that stuff go for storage until it's used and uh, we'll look at that a little bit so so here's just an example of a model railroad layout built um, uh, that i uh, industry that i photographed and i think this is a pretty neat deal because it's got a lot of, of parts to it it looks like it's part of the paper industry with the chemical cars there and the wood cars and, and things like that. But again, everything has a place as to where it has to go for delivery. You just don't drop off a bunch of tank cars and box cars. They have a designated spot because of the industry operation inside, how they're making what they're making. Where do these things need to be uh, in that concept? So, so again, when we talk about the assembly line or the building of things, one of the things you can do is go to the internet. So again, these are just some examples of, of uh, pictures I found on the internet, but they illustrate the parts you know, of how to build something, in this case, an automobile. So you've got robots up at the top and then they come around and then down here on the bottom, you've got them installing windshields. Okay, well, where did the windshields come from? How did those get to the plant or doors? or tires, and you can see parts waiting on the side there. Where did that all come from? How did it get there? And that's one of the things that you can do with uh, 
with the doors and the box cars and various things. So again, just illustrating that concept. Where do all these parts come from into the plant? At one time, the plants used to make a lot of this stuff. Now it's all shipped in and uh, to just in time or some other method uh, to be used in the building. So again, just illustrating that concept. So again, where do engines come from? Where do drive shafts come from? Where do transmissions come from? Where do tires come from? How do we store them? Where do we store them? Where's the door that's closest to the box car that they came in in, in relation to the assembly line? Now, if you're gonna do uh, other things, again, just illustrating it, uh, the research thing that you can do, here's steel making and uh, the parts that all the stuff you need to make steel, a lot of the stuff on steel on the internet, here's some more. So just getting to understand or learn how you make or how they make the product and the plant and the process of the industry that you're modeling. So again, lots of different things. Here's ethanol, again, the process of making it. So again, thinking about what comes in with the corn and, and then what's done is of course, ethanol and carbon dioxide and uh, the uh, dry distillers drains that they feed to cattle and stuff, you make them happy before they go to slaughter. Uh, a variety of different things that are both incoming, outcoming, and our waste products. So another example of corn processing. So again, it's just amazing. You think, pick a product or pick an industry and a product on your layout and then research it to find out, well, how do they make that? What do they use to make that? So this one you might be interested in, vodka, whiskey, or wine. <laughs> So here's another one that's uh, looking at the uh, uh, corn ethanol production. So again, if you look at your industry, do you have all these parts to uh, make something from start to scratch or start to the end? Now, I thought this was interesting here. Again, this, the concept of assembly, steps to build something in what order, the staging of materials that are needed, the staging of materials that are gonna either be on-site or off-site, and if it's off-site, then how do we get it over when we need it? You know, who moves it? Uh, does your railroad, do you have a, an engine on the industry property? Um, you know, the just-in-time delivery concept. Uh, what are the parts and the products in their flow through the assembly process? The selection of plant doors for just putting your railroad cars at so that the stuff is as close as possible to where it's going to be used on the assembly lines. Again, is it solids, liquids, or gases? And how are we moving it, rail or truck? And is there waste that's got to be gotten rid of? You know, all this stuff comes into thinking about that plant that you're building to put on your on your uh, layout. So a couple of pictures from the uh, Boeing factory out in California, or I mean uh, in Washington here. Uh, look at all the stuff around here that uh, that they're going to use to build. The, the stuff comes in in parts and all the other things that have to be added in. And so again, if you were supplying all this stuff to an airplane factory on your layout, how do you go about staging all that stuff? How do you get it in there? Where does it go? Where does it come from? You know, they, they move airplane uh, assemblies from Kansas to Washington on the BNSF. I've seen the train come through uh, on one of my trips out in Washington area there, or actually Idaho or Montana, but the train was coming through with all these airplane uh, um, assemblies. So again, just think about all that stuff. If you were moving that or supplying that on your layout, how would you do that? So just-in-time delivery of materials. Uh, again, on the pictures you see on the edge of the screen here, you know, there's a railroad yard and there's cars there for different uh, supplies. Uh, where is that stuff stored for just-in-time? Is it stored on off-site railroad cars? Is it stored at on-site railroad cars? And if they're on-site, how do we get them over to the plant? Uh, so that they're then in the right place. But if they're offsite, are they around the town? Are they sitting in yards somewhere? Are they going to come from some distance? And uh, maybe it won't be till the next operating session, those cars get moved to the factory. But again, an opportunity for you to think about that. So, all right, selecting factory doors or plant doors for material delivery. Uh, again, incoming products, what doors on your plant are the incoming doors for the materials? So what box cars or railroad cars are you gonna put at? What door, because it's closest to the assembly line where the, in, the stuff that's in that car are gonna be used. And again, is it solids, liquids and gases? Uh, are they parts? Are they complete assemblies? What's all going on? And then again, we look at all the, the storage, the packaging, the materials, the boxes, all that stuff that have to come in. 
If it's outgoing material, well, again, what doors are selected for outgoing materials or finished parts or products? And so again, I may have to assign a couple of cars to doors one, two, and three on my, at my plant because that's where incoming stuff goes. And then doors seven, eight, nine are outgoing products, uh, finished product. Door 10 is waste products. So again, what kind of a car do I have to assign to door 10? Because it's waste products leaving. So again, for you, if you're doing operating uh, sessions, putting one together, you're going to have to decide all those details to give to the crew so the right cars get to the right doors, as well as picking up the right cars or picking up the cars and then moving them to a place to go on to where they have to go. So again, things to think about there. I know that sounds complicated and technical and it's making the operations process a lot more complicated than just drop off two box cars, pick up two box cars. So, all right, so here's a plant. This was down in Toledo, uh, one of the plants on the layout tour. And you can see the doors numbered there, two and three. So again, if you weren't gonna do something with that in an operating session, why would you put numbers on your doors? You know, So that's something that you can look at doing as a detail is actually numbering the doors, which then uh, you know, keeps the uh, operations people thinking about what's going on here and getting stuff in the right place. And that, that's just a lot of, of uh, tight detailing type uh, operating things. So here's another factory. Uh, off of a layout, obviously. And again, you need to look at, you know, what kind of cars are there and in what place are they at? Is there a reason why those cars are in those specific places uh, on this layout? You know, is it incoming on one, outgoing on the other? Is there waste products? Uh, what, what's going on here? So again, another industry. Uh, so we have our, our uh, product loose uh, grains over on the on the what my would be my left side here the screen and the uh, in the silos and then we move it across into the building where they're making Budweiser beer so again what cars have to be by the beer plant for outgoing product so again just things to think about so really looking at this plant thinking to yourself okay what are they doing here how are they making what they're making where is the process being that they're making it at and for incoming products and outgoing products this is uh, off of Doug Tasgold's new layout down in uh, Blissfield and again it's a Coors beer company but again, if we look at this, we see box cars on the left side and we see small refrigerator cars on the right side. So what's going on on the left side building that we got to bring stuff in for all that kind of thing. And then over on the right side is the beer uh, situation. And you can see that there's an icing platform there as well as refrigerator cars to take Coors. And if you, some of you are old enough to remember in the 60s, uh, when Coors came out and the big deal was if you lived in Michigan and you wanted Coors, you had to find friends and family who were going to Colorado in the summer uh, to take coolers because then you could bring back Coors to Michigan, but it had to be kept cold. And so, again, you've got uh, refrigerator cars and stuff. But again, we have to think about how this is all done. What's the process there? So, so here's just a closer picture of the, the plant. in the other building. But again, if, if your operator said, you know, hey boss, what's going on in this building? Why do I need to have the cars in this specific order? Your answer is gonna tie to the assembly process of making whatever we make in here with the raw materials that are coming in and these, these doors, they have to go into a specific place to be used, so. This is a, a friendly, uh, layout over on the east side of Lansing there. Some of you have been to this uh, Canadian layout, but anyhow, here's, uh, we've got three doors uh, on this plant and there's some specific things that have to go in those doors or into that facility uh, to be used. So again, you know, as an operator, I need to know, as the layout owner, I need to know what they're making in there, how they're making it and what stuff goes in what door uh, for that operation. And then I've got to transmit that information to my operators on the layout. 
Again, another company on a layout. And again, the, uh, is there a specific reason that this hopper car with coal here is here on the right-hand side track versus the left-hand side track? So again, how are we making stuff? What are we making? Is there a specific reason that cars go to one track or the other track for your operators to, uh, to follow when they're servicing this plant? Another one with uh, two tracks going in. Uh, one may be just passing on through under that over the overhead uh, ramp or crossing there, and the other one may be where it actually services the facility. But again, all things we need to know at this molding company serving uh, Ohio and Michigan down in the uh, Toledo area. Again, several industries. Uh, why are these types of cars there? Is there a reason that they're in a specific order at the side of that plant? Uh, related to what we're making and stuff like that there. Several different loading docks here. You can see the, the basics. So we got one boxcar there at that door. Is there a reason that one is assigned to that door versus the other doors? And that would be understanding what they're, be, they're making or there's an assembly line process there that goes on in that building. So these this material's got to be at that door versus the other doors. So. So we have to understand what are we making here? How do we assemble it? How do we put it together? And then how do we feed materials to it? So, all right, this is a uh, up in Maine. This is a, um, just like that, the uh, guy that ran our Toledo convention, the former superintendent. But anyhow, this is a, a building and you can see it's really four buildings that have been added on to, uh, to the facility there as the facility grew. But again, is there a reason certain cars go to certain doors at this facility? Another one, again, doors, facilities, processes to make stuff, outgoing products, all that stuff in there. So I, I'm re-emphasizing the same thing to you, but I wanna make sure you, you, know, you kind of got the concept there, so. This was another interesting plant from down in Toledo, Universal Food Processing and uh, from, from yeah, October. And you can see we got four tracks going into this facility from the left to the right, uh, two on one side of these buildings and then two towards us here on this side. But again, I need to understand what are we doing at this plant? Why do things come in a certain way? What doors do they go? And then how are we making final products? And then when they come out on the other side, uh, if that's how it is, where are they going? Why are those cars in that order uh, and the support that's needed there? So, and I thought this was a neat plant with that, as you kind of think about those concepts that there are multiple doors, multiple tracks, we got tank cars and we got other kinds of cars there to support this industry. A little closer look at the inside part. So again, you know, you could say, well, Rich, I don't need to know any of this stuff. You know, I'm just going to tell them, put three cars in there and pull three cars out. Okay, that's fine. Or you can specifically sit down and think about what do they do here and how do they do it? And where does the incoming stuff go? And why does it go there? Or where is the outgoing stuff? And why is it coming out of those doors? So again, inside out or incoming outgoing products. So thinking with... Uh, track with um, sidings on both sides of the building. This is a, a sugar beet factory. And I want to say this is in Lansing at the, uh, over at the, oh, I can't think of the layout that they set up at Christmas time. But anyhow, it's a sugar beet factory and uh, lots of detail. But again, think about what we're doing here. We're bringing in incoming sugar beets and we're manufacturing sugar and everything else. What kinds of cars are coming in? What order? Where do they go? And all that kind of stuff. And what are all the other chemicals and processes involved with making sugar beets? So, all right, this was one up in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, again, a paper plant, but again, you can see on uh, one side we have tank cars for incoming uh, uh, liquids that are used in making paper. And then on the other side are various, uh, are the wood chips as well as outgoing box cars. So again, understanding how we make those, that paper and what's involved with that. So this was uh, uh, up in uh, north of Rockford, Illinois. This was a guy who uh, 
had a huge amount of rarities passed away now, but he loved to build buildings and in big industries and things like that. A lot of people had his industries on their layouts, but uh, again, wonderful building maker. But again, the understanding of what we make, what take, what in the way of solids, liquids, and gases are used to make it, the manufacturing process, and then the outgoing products and the outgoing waste products were all detailed into his uh, his plants and uh, operations. This is uh, Toledo uh, from this fall. Uh, and again, uh, with a variety of cars and parts to this uh, plant. And uh, so we have to, we kind of, oops, back up here. Uh, so again, what, what's done at what place on this site related to the cars that either come in or are going out uh, on this operation to. All right, this was a uh, up in uh, Hamilton, Michigan, and it doesn't show it as well as I wanted to show it when I took the pictures, but uh, way in the background, there are uh, railroad cars. If we were all standing together, I'd be putting my finger up on the screen to show you the different four different locations of railroad cars at different places on this uh, this ag facility. But again, uh, it, when it comes in, here comes my air conditioning or my furnace guy, um, that uh, you know, why are they where they are? What is done? Is there different kinds of incoming grains for different kinds of products uh, at this facility? They have to go to certain sidings. So again, we, we look at that situation. Just again, a little, I cut up several different pictures to show you the variety of places where cars are at this facility in Hamilton, Michigan. Hey, Rich, I think yes. if you wanted to, you could uh, put your cursor on the pictures and I think we'd be able to see that. This okay. Yeah, there you go. Can you see it? Okay. I'll keep that in mind. All right. So this is the industry that was in Coralville, Iowa, that was part of the plan or process to develop this um, clinic. And so when we go to the left, we've got incoming liquids. Don't know what they are. Don't necessarily care. This is a low pressure tank car versus a high pressure car like LPG or anhydrous ammonia. And then we've got auto part type box cars here. And then we've got uh, doors over on the side here for either incoming or outgoing products. We've got a staging yard over here on the side. Again, it may have something to do with this plant, may not. But again, it was, you know, that was what got me thinking about this whole situation and the uh, kinds of things that I wanted to put in this presentation. So just another view, but it was originally going to be an auto parts plant or an auto plant, and then it became something else. And I don't remember now what it is. There's a sign up there. So when we look at the other end, uh, you can see the, the doorways and the numbers on the doorways and then the uh, what could be an easy a staging yard in the in front of it there that you're bringing in railroad cars that aren't needed with stuff at the present time. And later I will we'll get to it but it's a, I'll call it incoming and outgoing yard next to the plant, but pretty neat plant. And I don't know how many pictures I took of it and thought about it. And then I got in my car and, and just continued to drive to Bismarck thinking about this plant and what Tom had told me they were going to do and then what they changed uh, and uh, adapted it into a different company than an auto parts plant. So, so again, just things to look at. Now, this is the Ford plant in Mexico, Missouri. Mexico or Missouri is kind of a funny state. They like ran out of, of city name. So then they started calling it by countries. So Mexico is here and there's other countries uh, that are city names in there. But you can see the plant from a design of, uh, of layout is this, the width of a two by four. And down one side are outgoing products, automobiles. And on the other side on the right are incoming parts and incoming materials for this plant. So they didn't have to build a huge plant. They just built a wall and made it. And now they've extended it further down. It's about this part of the picture was when I was there when it was about 24 feet long. So I don't know how many of you have a built an industry on your layout that's 24 feet long, but uh, again, pretty neat kind of operation. So let's take a look at some of the, the sides. So this side of it is, uh, is the outgoing finished products. Uh, and it, and I've operated on this layout where this part of it to switch this is about a three hour job, just this plant, you know, to get all the stuff. So yeah, on this side, you've got your outgoing products of automobiles. And then on the other side, on the upper level, there is the other 
is the other side of the plant with all the incoming parts. So you can see uh, up on the top there, right in the center, there's a covered hopper, then there's some gondolas. There's a little conveyor belt coming out of the uh, plant there to go into the hop or covered hoppers. And that would be outgoing waste uh, from that end of the plant. And then down further, you can see more doors uh, down there. So we have a variety of things here. And uh, as we just move down the side of the factory, you can see the doors. These could be tires, could be batteries, could be door, uh, or I mean windshields, um, seats, anything that is a loose component, engines that are needed to build automobiles. And again, the cars are staged at a specific door because that's directly connected to where the uh, assembly line is. And then there's more down here with doors. And then here's where all the frames come in to go into the plant to assemble the vehicles. So I'm looking forward to in a couple of weeks being in Mexico to look at the uh, additions to this plant that they've made to make it even bigger. But again, the concept there is doors, or I mean the, the um, um, frames and then whatever's coming in here and the doors could be engines or whatever as the vehicles are built. Go back to those assembly line drawings I showed you doors. So get things to think about, ideas. I ask you a question on that? Sure. How does that 24 foot uh, uh, one industry relate to the whole layout? Well, um, the entire the entire layout is um, is two levels and it takes quite a while to get around. It's a huge layout. They do have a website, as I remember. Uh, but basically, the layout goes from uh, Mexico, Missouri area, where they're, they're homed, all the way down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the uh, track plan. And then a variety of industries all the way along there. And uh, it's a, a you, when I got involved as a club, it was a club with it's in the bottom of an auto parts store that originally was a, a grocery store. So they got a huge space and there were about six members to the club because the, all the industries had closed up and moved away in Mexico and they lost their membership. And then um, they just kind of kept going uh, in it. But it's, it's in Missouri between uh, the center of the state down to Tulsa, Oklahoma is uh, where they're yep. operating. Is at. it... Um... Uh, are all the other industries large industries also or do they have no. some that get one car or a, yep a yep mixture, there's you know? all those things and there's a, a wide variety of industries and most of them are just track side industries just the back side the railroad side the part of it that we're interested in uh, from a standpoint and it, it's a continuous running layout um on upper level and lower level, you start out on, on whichever level and head the other way. And eventually you get to the other, to the bottom uh, staging part. And uh, one of the things they do is they have people working in the yard, assembling the trains and they bring it out to a, a yard office and they hand you off the controller and you take it from there as the engineer. And then you just start working from there and just work, go all around. I've got a whole presentation I do on the layout um, the Mexico club layout, but it's, uh, it just goes and goes and, all, and goes, uh, until you finally get to where you started, but you're on the other level, either up on top or down below. And they, uh, the famous train on their layout is they call it the damn coal train because it's like a hundred cars, coal cars. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun to, to operate and just go from point A to point B, which is, you know, from one level. And then you finally go around a large helix to get to the other level. So, so you might look on the uh, internet for the Mexico, Mexico, uh, is it the MTP, I think is the, the name, but again, it's a, it's an interesting layout. And again, it's just a small club of people uh, from around the Mexico, Columbia area, um, Jefferson City and stuff that uh, operate on it. Big investment and uh, they don't have much heat in the winter months either because there's no, nothing down there <laughs> in the basement of this old grocery store. And now it's an auto parts store, you know, like an O'Reilly's or something upstairs. So, and they all come out uh, when they get detection of a train coming through because the Kansas City Southern comes through there and the Norfolk Southern comes through the town just a few blocks away. But you can see the tracks from the, the from the facility. So, 
Mexico, Texas, and Pacific Railroad, something like that. So, did I answer your question? Give you uh, enough information? Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, as we look at these, uh, uh, this plant or these plants and these ideas, are there other things we need to uh, connect to these plants as we go along that adds a little more detail to the operation? So, the first one I listed here was scaling. Do we do a lot of weighing of incoming stuff or outgoing stuff? at the industry. And that's a whole thing on itself. We'll get to each of these in a, few, in a second. Uh, do you need to do icing, you know, as to the time period of your cars in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s? Uh, is there a special loading of products and transport, again, to get the final product off? If you're gonna move um, combines on a flat car out as the final product, what kinds of things had to come in to make that combine and, and that? Loading, un loading and unloading of railroad cars to other railroads. So again, how do we move them? Tank cars, loading and lo offloading. We'll look at some of these and then a little bit about intermodal tanks that are used in different ways. So, so scaling uh, has a variety of buildings and uh, all of us have seen scale structures. How are you doing? Thermostats right here. And where was the circuit board at? It's on that wall uh, where the curtains are by the window. Okay. Yeah, I pulled the curtains to the side and the box is open. Sorry about that. So again, just a couple of illustrations of what you're going to need to build uh, or buy if you're going to have scaling of uh, your cars ingoing or outgoing. So this is the layout in the limestone or lime plant down in Toledo. And he has a nice little scale there and cars going over. But uh, the interesting thing is he bought one of these electronic devices so that when you run the car over, it reads what the car is into a computer and then it actually gives you scale weights to, uh, to write down. So if you're the person who's switching that yard and you've got to make note of the weights of the incoming materials or outgoing materials, uh, there's actually stuff comes up and the numbers vary based on a, um, a, a uh, like a barcode on the bottom of the car that it reads. So uh, it's there. So a little more complications for the uh, operators, you know, or the business owner, operator. If you need ice, again, what's the process involved with icing? Again, we pre-cool the cars and then we may have top loading ice. We may have crushed ice sprayed on the load at the middle uh, of the car and uh, to do things. So there's a variety of different steps in, uh, in icing as well as then in route icing to keep it cold for its definite destination. So again, more details. Again, is the product got to be kept cold? How do we do that? Where does it come from? What doors do you have to load from uh, for that? If we're dealing with vehicles and stuff, again, it could be uh, automobile racks. Again, how do we load automobile racks? And those of you up in Lansing, of course, have uh, over on the west side, there a great example of uh, automobile loading. Tractors, this is up in uh, north of Cedar Rapids when I lived in Iowa. Again, you could go and see uh, where they loaded the tractors onto the flat cars. And, and then they used to come through uh, um, Cedar Rapids all the time. But there's lots of places in Iowa where they're loading tractors of different kinds on. Or you can go to Galesburg, Illinois, and the big yard there, the bridge goes over, and you can see lots of uh, tractors on flat cars going through. So this is Cedar Rapids. Uh, pictures, tractors and tractor trains. They say that when the tractors are on the flat cars are heading to the ports to be shipped overseas. Tractors that are on vehicles, trucks are uh, being used in the US. So don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I was told. Okay, another thing to look at is what I call loading through cars. And uh, so here we have a freight yard out in, uh, in Kansas City and uh, Again, we've got a platform here on the left side and just one loading here. But again, a lot of times they'll line these cars up side by side so they go from the door to the door uh, to load directly through or from this way over. So again, that's another concept that you could set up on your layup is loading side by side cars and lining and telling the operator, okay, when you line these cars up, you need to have the doors side by side because the workers are actually going to lay uh, uh, bench work across 
to get from one car to the other car. All right, tank cars, and those of you who know me know that I'm, I'm kind of particular about tank cars and that we need to have the right kind of car, unless it's just sitting there, the right kind of car for the right kind of tank. So in this case, we have a high pressure car. This is a DOT 112 car, uh, probably dealing with propane or, or LP gas, as we call it. And we have the right kind of storage tank here for high pressure products. So these are correct as far as that situation. But again, uh, we've got an unloading facility or it could be a loading that uh, we're doing between the right, the high pressure car, DOT 112 or DOT 105 or DOT 114, and then the storage tank over here. So, and again, uh, we come over here and look and we have a high pressure storage tank. And then when you look at this tank car here, this is a low pressure, or I mean a high pressure car, but Sometimes you'll find people with low pressure tank cars sitting here, and that's wrong for the product that we have uh, involved there. So make sure you're doing that right. Especially, I've been thrown out of basements for Ill, for mentioning that to layout owners. Hey, you got the wrong kind of tank car for the products that you're working at here. So, but uh, and, uh, if you told me it's just being stored there until they can move it to a plant where they can receive it, okay, I, I'll buy that for the first visit at your house. But. All right, so this is a, a over in Wisconsin and uh, La Crosse, and they needed this company needed to bring in liquids to the plant for whatever they're doing. So again, they cut a track path across the parking lot here, and they set up an unloading facility uh, right here, and then they unload off the bottom into the plant right here. So if you were looking for an industry or for a, a another. Um, place to have a car operation and it's kind of a Saturday night activity. Okay, so we lay some track, we set up a car unloading point right next to the plant, put some hoses on the ground and you've got another place to deliver cars at your next operating session. Nothing high tech or detailed to do, but here's the, uh, the tank car and the unloading into the plant. They're unloading some type of corrosive product based on the placard there. I can't read the number. Um, I'd have to enlarge it to get there. Let me see here. Uh, looks like 1824. So you could look up 18, UN 1824 and what they're bringing in. Um, corn syrup. This is out in Las Cruces, New Mexico. This is a corn syrup unloading facility. So these are all cars in waiting or staging or just in time delivery. And then this is the actual unloading facility here where they do it inside the building uh, for variety of reasons. One is, is bees. Man, does this attract bees uh, to the cars? I was at a Pepsi plant in Wichita, Kansas, and I couldn't believe how many bees were in the building around the valving and stuff because of the leakage of corn syrup and attraction of bees. Big hazard for workers. So again, looking at here's what we do in our building, and then they take it from here to the bottling companies and uh, over in El Paso, Texas, but this is where they had to unload it. And then again, these are cars coming in that are full waiting and they are cars maybe empty waiting to be picked up. And somebody has to come down here and switch these cars between this building and this yard as part of an operation. This one's up here in Michigan. This is over uh, just to the east side of Battle Creek. This is by the Kellogg plant, again, corn syrup. So again, you have quite a few uh, cars here unloading uh, corn syrup and then they're pulled out by the NS heading back to Jackson, Michigan uh, over here. Uh, and this is a, um, the Kellogg plant is back over here. And I don't know why Kellogg just doesn't do their own corn syrup, but they evidently go through uh, one of the ag companies to offload it here and then they on trucks and then they pull it over to the plant. And of course they probably do post that's down here too. And that, so it's really a two plant operation. But again, I've got Incoming cars, I've got staging, I got pickup, all those things happening. This was down in uh, 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 Santa Teresa, New Mexico, when I was the county uh, hazmat person. And this uh, plant, they made styrofoam seats like for tractors and all stuff. So they had three kinds of products that are brought in in tank cars here. And they are offloaded into the plant from here. And then they are mixed together and the, the reaction produces the, the expansion of the foam and you get like, a, I don't remember, like 200 foot piece of foam that's five or six inches thick 
as it expands and grows and then they take it and cut it and sell it for uh, seats for tractors or cars or whatever you want. But the original product starts out as chemicals like this brought into the uh, plant mixed together and then the reaction produces foam and it grows and grows and grows to produce the, uh, the seat foam that you're seeing. So again, a simple factory could be the backside, uh, one track, again, places for specific cars to go because of the hosing to go into the chemical process to make the foam seats. So when your operators say, well, why do I have to put that blue car first? Because that's the A chemical and the next car is the B chemical and the third car is the C chemical and they go into that, into that process uh, in that order. So again, here's just a loading sulfur in a solid form. So again, just a, a loading rack there to do. You can see the yellow sulfur on the ground where it spilled. So again, is there a specific order that the cars have to be? But we're taking good sulfur and transporting it as liquid sulfur. Uh, you could have a parking lot, uh, and this is down in, was down in El Paso, Texas area also, uh, where they're bringing in carbon dioxide on a spur at a facility, and then they're offloading it to a truck, and then they're hauling it to the bottling plants to carbonate the beverages. So again, you could have uh, just a small trans transload facility with a specific industry or a whole bunch of industries that feed off of that. But in this case, we're doing carbon dioxide from uh, the tank car to the tank truck to go for beverage uh, carbonation. So here's another picture of that corn syrup plant that's in, uh, in uh, Battle Creek on a sunny day. And you can see the cars and the truck loading there to take it across to the uh, cereal plants. This is up in Holland, Michigan. Uh, and uh, these are tank cars full of acetylene, or not acetylene, acetone. And this is a plant that uh, puts the, the aerosol into spray paint cans. And when I was going to high school in the 60s, a friend of mine's dad owned the plant. It was called American Aerosol. But uh, now they are bringing in acetone. And I assume the quantity of acetone is not going into the spray paint cans, but is cleaning out paint lines uh, as they change colors and things like that, because acetone isn't what they use for the aerosol in the containers. But here you've got uh, three tank cars uh, at a uh, offloading facility. All right, this is the one over east of Lansing. Again, besides the plant that's to the left, uh, you have a, a loading or unloading rack here of low pressure tank cars. And again, the question would be for the operator owner as to why are they there? Is there anything specific about the order where they're going to unload or load in relation to the, uh, the, the tubing and the piping that's here? So, and again, these could be a, a staging area for uh, incoming outgoing cars. Again, why do we, you know, this is Rich asking, okay, so I got this uh, industry here. Why are we bringing in a hooker tank car? You know, what, what's in that car? Why is it there? Why is it going in? What's it used for in the process? So just irritating questions for the layout owner. All right, here is a uh, clay coming in for paper. There's three tracks going into this building. Why are there three tracks? What's on each track? Is there a specific order or place that the industry, the cars are supposed to be based on the products that they're carrying? In this case, a paper making operation. So there's one sulfuric acid, one something else, and the third is the clay uh, for the paper. Again, just another tank car at a small siding here at an industry. Why, why, why? You know, what I would be the kind of questions that Rich asks um, before he gets thrown out of the basement again. So another industry, this is Avery Refined Oil uh, Facility. So what kind of oil are they doing? Is this, uh, you know, a soybean oil that's uh, coming in as beans and uh, covered hoppers and then it's processed and then it goes out as, as soybean oil right here. So how do they make soybean oil? You know, that's going to be important for you to know in relation to the kinds of cars that are coming in and the cars that are going out. So again, another transload facility. I don't know if this is plastic or if it's uh, grain products, but again, they look the the uh, covered hoppers and the trucks looks very familiar or very similar as far as that. So again, they're coming. The railroad spurs here. 
the truck is offloading from the railroad car and then transporting it to the assembly plant. So now I mentioned intermodal is a little different. Uh, there are four kinds of intermodal containers and all four of those are, uh, are on this flat car I shot out in, the, in Clovis, New Mexico. It's a once in a lifetime photo to see four types on one flat car, but going from the left end here, this is a pressure container. You can tell by the um, end of the car here. And this is cryogenic argon or cryogenic products. So they're very, very cold is, here's the safety relief device to unload some pressure if it gets too warm. Then a box in a variety of sizes box. And then we have two of the regular low pressure tanks. Uh, I am 101 and a 102 tanks based on the pressure that the product's in. But again, if you're gonna look at using intermodal, is there a reason that you're bringing stuff in by intermodal container? What kind of stuff, pressure, cryogenic box, uh, or just regular liquid? And uh, here's a bigger one that's, uh, you see around Gary, a lot of corrosives on these intermodal containers on trucks on highways. And I see them occasionally on the railroad also. But again, understand why are we using it? What's it for and things like that. Here's smaller ones, 2735 is the UN number 101 or 102 tanks. But then we get to a plant here, and this is a, in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called the Old Forest uh, Plant. And you can see the bottle for a water tower up there, and they're making alcohol products. And they're bringing in intermodal containers full of, uh, of alcohol, ethyl alcohol, to make uh, different kinds of liquor. And so the question becomes, are they nursing off of these tanks on a truck bed or are they lifting them off and putting them over on a, on a stand and then nursing off of them instead of building their own tanks and I don't know the question and I didn't ask because that would be uh, I could get in trouble for those kinds of questions as a terrorist or something like that but I just looked at all these 1170 ethyl alcohol tanks and said you know it's either going to be nursing off of them or they're going to uh, uh, do something else with them but so here's a, uh, this is uh, a nitrogen. Uh, so it's a cryogenic tank. You can tell by the, uh, the uh, self or the discharge here, the uh, accidental releases and things, but all the uh, valves and controls are here versus on the end. So they can nurse off of this, uh, just deliver the tank on the truck trailer and then hook on and do what they need to do. So just an illustration. Now, Next section, we get to looking at waste. Waste can be solid, liquids, or gases. And uh, at your facility, what are they doing? How are they getting out? What's, where's it going? Who's buying it? And stuff like that. So here's a liquid waste set up down at one of the steel mills down in Gary, Indiana. So uh, this is a truck, not a railroad car, but the same concept could be there. So you just put a track there and uh, you can see the discharge device that they parked the, the truck under. In, this, in another case, it could be a train car and they just uh, gravity feed it right into the tank. So waste liquid, something to add to one of your industries, have a reason for doing it. Uh, this is uh, the collection point for uh, a tr uh, oil from vehicles. When they do the oil changes, they pick it all up and then they bring it out to a facility where then they just pipe it up and put it in tank cars to haul off for whatever they're gonna do it. There's another industry that's buying that. So this is just waste oil from uh, gas stations and service centers and stuff like that. Uh, here we have cor corrosives, uh, could be going into the tank car, could be coming from the tank car into the truck, but we're dealing with corrosives in a small trans care facility. And because there's no hoses there it's at this setup, I can't tell you whether, which way it's going in the process out or in between the truck and the railroad car. This was a, uh, in uh, Missouri, uh, an interesting little setup that you could build on the backside of one of your industries that does steel. And uh, so again, and when they get done cutting all this stuff, they have small pieces and then they just load it into the gondola uh, there to haul off to somebody who's gonna buy it. It could be a steel mill, it could be a, some recycling center, but it's just a, a scrap industry uh, leaving facility. So. And uh, this is down by Blissfield, uh, on the east end of Blissfield. This comes out of a facility. And uh, again, it could be a truck or a train car pickup point, but this is something you could build easily onto an industry on a, 
on a Saturday night and on Sunday, you now got another place to prop a car and then pick up a car, a gondola, or maybe even open hopper. But anyhow, it's a waste situation or it could be a loading of new material. So, so here's a couple of illustrations of somebody who's done that on a Saturday night and now has another business to uh, move cars to. So again, ask yourself, what am I making? And when they get done making that one thing, what do we have left over? Is it scrap parts, scrap materials that we can sell? Is it scrap plastic that we can recycle? Is it scrap whatever? And then uh, think about how I would get rid of it. So now I also illustrate or think about the fact, what do the, are the customers interested in this whole thing? You know, the, the customers of the plant, either incoming or outgoing and stuff, how did that fit into all the conversation? So again, as the customer here, this is a paper making plant and they're bringing in uh, the uh, uh, stuff to make paper, just like that. I can't think of my, the term I want out of there uh, for that, but uh, anyhow, is there a specific reason and why do we bring them in? How many cars do we bring in? How long does this take to offload? Do we have to be there? Do we bring in enough for a week's worth of operation? And then we bring in on the weekend, the next week's worth of operation. So another paper industry up in uh, Wisconsin. And if you look in the here, all the different kinds of cars that are brought in here. And uh, so a lot of times we just see a model railroad that'll have a, a bunch of pulpwood cars or uh, lumber cars, timbers and branches and, and logs and stuff like that coming in. Well, wait a second, what's all of this other stuff here coming in? Uh, and when you go research how to make paper, you'll see all the different things that you need to make paper and a lot of liquids and gases corrosives and stuff come in. So again, better understanding of what you need to illustrate that with and operate with that on your layout. So uh, just uh, when I was in California at the uh, uh, Southwest, whatever it is, uh, convention right after my heart surgery, three weeks after my heart surgery last August, I uh, got on a jet and flew out to Los Angeles for a day of their convention and, and uh, saw some speakers, friends speak in the morning, and then went off to see four layouts in the afternoon to, to look at uh, produce operations in Southern California, lemons, oranges, and stuff like that. But again, here you can look at, uh, it could be side-by-side -side loading, or just here's the cars that are specific to this industry for uh, uh, the uh, produce of uh, California. In this case, this is probably the spur here because of the caboose and stuff they're switching but again uh, it could be side by side loading unloading again looking at uh, uh, routing of cars interchanges what are you going to do with the stuff after you load the cars where is it going what direction in the country what who's buying the stuff is it just moving across town uh, where are the cars going and again your plan that you're going to set up with your operators as to okay we we got you loading the car or dropping cars off at specific doors okay we got that down understanding of what we're making how we're making it solids liquids and gases and now we're ready to pick up cars on the other side as final finished products waste materials all those things where do they go is there a, a specific door for cars that are going eastbound and specific doors for cars that are going westbound north south whatever and again we need to take a look at some of those things and uh, make sure that we've got stuff at the right place on the uh, industry so so kind of in conclusion here uh and then we'll take some questions if you have any or a discussion again you know as i said research is so important but you need to understand what are the companies or factories or industries on your layouts doing? Why did you choose that as a company on your layout? Uh, understand the products that they make. How do they make it? Why do they make it? Um, what's involved with solids, liquids, and gases? Because again, different kinds of railroad cars. Uh, look at the assembly process, uh, assembly lines and stuff like that. Where would you have doors to bring things close to the assembly line? And how would you feed that doorway with your, your cars? What does just in time mean? Does it mean it's on the site? It's on a siding? It's across town? How does it get moved? 
you know, that type of thing. Think about the waste that your industry is going to generate, solid liquids and gases, and how do you move that? When we talked about the ethanol plant, you know, incoming corn, okay, great, and maybe some other stuff. But then outgoing, we're going to have ethanol, and that ethanol needs to have gasoline added to it, three to five percent, to make it denatured ethanol. So you got to have, bring in gasoline to to do that and load into the ethanol tank cars. But then also you're going to have the dye distillers grain, the DDGs, which is a solid material that goes off to paces like uh, uh, stockyards and other places where they do feed. And then you're going to have, if you have enough going through, you're going to make carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a gas and, and actually it's transported as a liquid, but it's a gas. So that'll either go in a tank car or a tank truck, depending on the quantity that you're making as an outgoing product. Is there anything else there that's waste in that process that you can sell off uh, as you make it. So again, understanding that whole thing is important. Understand the industry's customers and their needs uh, as again, they want to buy from you. So what can you do to help them? Well, we've decided that we're going to number the doors and certain cars that are going north are going to go always go to plant door number three and be loaded there. And that those are cars going to the northern customers and stuff. Uh, understand car routings, car needs, the types of cars that are going to have stuff uh, in them. And then again, like I said, do your research over and over and over. I do, I re-illustrate that concept of do your research so that you understand it. So anyhow, enjoy, uh, if you take these ideas, enjoy the improvement in your operations, have fun and uh, discussion and questions. So I'm going to take this off, see if I can get me back to stop share. There we go. Any comments or questions or thoughts? Uh, I have a, a comment uh, about the uh, placarding for industries. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and you had some of Tom's. As a matter of fact, I think uh, one of the ones I have here is a placard I made for Tom uh, for one of those industries you showed. I don't let me let me do something here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I couldn't think of his name here in the middle of the conversation. Yeah, Tom, Tom Weaver. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, let me see if I can put this up here. You okay. can see, see this placard uh, that mm -hmm. I created in Corel Draw. Okay. And what I did was uh, I took all the notes. Let me get my fingers out of the way here. No, I, see. I, I uh, took all the notes that he had and put them in here. So you can see exactly what you have to do as a, as a switch crew when you get there. Yeah. It tells you the spot numbers. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, uh, if your way bill has a spot number on it, it can, uh, it can give you the information uh, of where, where you're going to place the car. Can you take a picture of that for me and email I, me that picture and, of that? And I can add it to the presentation. Well, what what I will be happy to do is um, I can scan. I'll, I'll print okay. one, scan it, and send it to you, so it's better okay. quality. Yeah, that shows um, exactly what I'm I'm looking at. I'm talking yeah, about. I think because uh, a lot of times you'll find when you go to an industry after, if there's not enough information, the cars aren't placed in the right places. Yep. They try; it's not their fault. It's yep. it, it, there's no documentation for them. Well. So. well it, it probably, and it also goes back to the very beginning. We decided to put an industry here. This is the industry, but we never did the research to understand how they make what they make, what they need to make it. And when they get done making it, okay, here's a final product. In other words, if you're getting plastic pellets, not only can you make uh, uh, piping, but you can make fences, you can make uh, deck materials, you can make plastic chairs, all these different things, all the other products that could be made by those plastic pellets and peanuts. And then again, how do we ship all those out? Where do they come from? And is there any waste to go? And again, that's that thinking out of the box and really spending some time with research and asking friends, hey, I, you know, what do you think about this? I got an idea. And I, I think there's some opportunities to expand some of our industries and our operations when we look at all those things. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with bring in to take out to, if that's right. what you want, you know, that's okay. And, uh, but if you want to get even more detailed in the operations, uh, you know, those are things from the industry side that can, can uh, add on to the realism of your railroad side. Right. Well, you know, that's why I love your program making pancakes. <laughs> I mean, it, those two, uh, you know, hand in glove. Yeah. 
the, the industry, you know, what are you going to do with the industry? So you've created the industry, which is a lot of fun uh, because, you know, you know, it's something you're interested in right. and uh, you develop it from there. And uh, the making pancakes, which <laughs> I have a problem with the title of that. It turned me <laughs> off completely because uh, of, of what you get out of it was it was uh, an excellent program. Yeah. Uh, you've got this industry. Now, how are you going to use it? And yeah. um, I, I, I felt that was one of the best clinics I sat through. Yeah, I, Thank you. I learned uh, quite a bit from that. And um, well, you're going yeah. to be presenting that down, uh, you know, in Indianapolis. Uh, yep. I appreciate you offering that. Yeah, no problem. Well, it's, you know, like I said, maybe I'm nuts about this stuff, but it's like, because I understand the other thing and I enjoy the research part, you know, going online and looking up, well, how do you make this? You know, what's out there? And I, a guy that I, at a conference I was at did a thing on, on, um, paper making and he shipped me his uh his uh, his slideshow i didn't ask for the slideshow i just wanted a couple slides out of it and i'll just send you a whole presentation but it it looked at all the things that you needed to make paper and the chemicals and all that kind of stuff and it was able to to get a lot of stuff but it also illustrated how many cars per day the plant was receiving of the different kinds of things to to make stuff and that uh, was interesting also, how many cars of sulfuric acid, how many cars of this uh, day were being brought to the thing. No way could we actually uh, model sure. that, that process, but it was interesting to understand that. Right. And that, that all came from research and, and things like that. So, I, I do have a question for you. Um, okay. on, an, on a location on my railroad that I can't figure out what to do with it, um, <laughs> I have two two tracks they parallel there's uh, maybe five inches or so huh? in between them uh i can get about eight cars i was figuring tank cars but it doesn't have to be tank cars um i think it's going to be open if there's any building it's just going to be a, a, a what a satellite building a small building uh, to okay. support it not a big industry at least that's not what i plan mm -hmm. i could put a, a, a building you know just a, a backdrop type building uh to tie it into it but i was wondering if there's some way uh, of bringing either tank car loaded tank cars of some type and unloading or picking up but it's got to be kind of appropriate for the central tennessee area yeah uh outside nashville it's at a cedar uh cedar hill which is a smaller town north of uh, nashville my first thought would be two things. One is why not build a transload facility? In other words, there are some industries in town that don't have tracks by them, but need things that come as solids, liquids, or gases. And you know, all the above or one or the other. And now you can bring those cars in offload them so you got to have a little space between the tracks to let trucks go through but and we don't really care about the truck portion to the factory all we're doing is bringing in the cars to support those uh, maybe half a dozen or 10 industries in town that don't have tracks by them but need stuff and want to buy it in large quantities and then have the trucking ability to move it over now you've got a variety of of uh of cars that can come in. In the case of tank cars, I can have low pressure, I can have high pressure, you know, uh, offloading there. I can do uh, covered hoppers, I can do open hoppers, you know, and unload and put it in trucks and move it over, uh, or vice versa. In the case of loading, un, you know, old products, like I showed you the waste oil. Uh, they could go around town and pick up all the waste oil, come over, and there's some old DOT 10, uh, 111 cars there, and they just pump it up in the top of them, and they haul that waste oil to another part of, this, of the U.S. where they're reprocessing or re-refining it or whatever. It doesn't matter, but it's just picked up there, and then it's moved off the layout to a facility where it's actually used. So. It's not your concern what the facility that they're getting it at. It just, hey, to the operators, hey, you guys, those four tank cars there, uh, that's waste product going to a, a place that refines it off the layout. And all, all they do is go to staging and then they come back as empties and are reloaded again. But okay. there's a lot of things they're doing in transload facilities that um, that you we don't need to have a lot of detail. We just need to have the place where the loaded's come in, they get unloaded and then they go back out and new loaded come in. So it, it's just like a modern day team track? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be appropriate for mid-50s? Yep. 
Yeah. And um, would yeah, spot- because you you're not going to be able to find anybody who's going to be able to disagree with you that it wasn't appropriate. It's your okay. layout. It's your industry. It's your community. And it's just the way it is. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that, but I want it to be kind of, yeah, you know, appropriate for, you know, I yeah. could say that modern diesel, I like it. So it's going to be on my <laughs> 1950s railroad. Right. Uh, the but other you... question I have, do you, do you have specific spots for specific types of loads? At a transload facility? just like a, a team track? Uh, just a team track. And the only thing that would be specific is in the case of the tank cars, you, are you doing DOT 111? So it's gravity, do, it's top loading. So you're going to have to have racks there to top load down into the man, man way. And it's bottom unloading. So it comes out of the bottom of the tank car. So that's specific to DOT 111 uh, low pressure tank cars. If you have high pressure tank cars, you're only going to load and unload from the top. So again, your loading rack has to have ingoing and outgoing hoses that would be at the at the top. Nothing comes out of a, a high pressure car at the bottom. There are some bottom outlet type tank cars, but they're they're not common. So you either DOT 111 top load, bottom unload, DOT 105s, 112s, 114s, top loading, top unloading. Now and, and then covered That's hopper. Type of cars, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. and it says right on the side of the car. Uh, unless you're old enough, it'll say DOT 111, DOT 112 on the specs on the right-hand side of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if, you, if you're doing covered hoppers, again, you can load the covered hoppers from the top possibly, or you're going to and unload from the bottom. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, open hoppers, uh, then you're going to deal just with dumping on top and coming in. As you go up 131 coming into Grand Rapids on the south side is the Grand Elk Yard, and they have a, a business there that loads, um, not scrap, but uh, uh, some material in the open hoppers. And it's right along the highway there as you're getting closer to where the engine facilities are, the office and stuff like that, you'll see a couple of open hoppers there. And there's a conveyor belt system that they come up and dump in and it dumps into there. And I don't know what the products are. I've taken pictures of them, but I haven't really studied anything because you have to eat on their property uh, but you can come up and get off and just go in and you can see it down the the thing and you see it from the highway but it's some sort of waste that's dumped in uh, uh, open hoppers and then it goes from there so hmm. i can follow up uh with you i'll just contact you separately yeah so, no uh, problem pick your brains more but i appreciate that <laughs> that, that really is a good idea um, well it's yeah. there's there's two I, i've I want to do a new another clinic down the road on the two places on a layout that you can have the most kinds of cars, types of cars coming and going and have lots of traffic every operating session. And that's freight houses and uh, and transload facilities um, and, or interchanges. And I mean, not freight houses, but interchanges. You build an interchange and you can have any, you can leave any kind of a car there. You can pick up any kind of a car there. You're moving them all the time, cars in and out and stuff like that at an interchange. And then the same thing with a transload facility. You can do almost anything you want based on what the local industries uh, need and want uh, at that facility. There's one over by Toledo that you can see over on the east side of Toledo. There's a transload yard with CSX. Um, And uh, uh, there's probably some in, in Michigan too over by Detroit. But again, the, the concept of transload is any car can come in and be offloaded or loaded based on who's paying the bill. You know, so interchanges and transload facilities, huge operating opportunities, lots of different kinds of ca- cars and things coming and going every operating session. The old B&O yard uh, in Toledo by the Maumee Bridge has been turned into an intermodal yard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As, as well as a Claire. Uh, they have a big, I guess they have two transfer yards now, particularly for plastics. And basically they bring the cars up there on Great Lakes Central and then the trucks pick it up for the quote last mile or hundred or so to deliver all hmm. through the well the, part they, of the state. The Grand Elk Yard right along 131 south of Grand Rapids there, they're also doing covered hoppers. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're doing grain products or if they're doing plastics or both or whatever. You see covered hoppers sitting there and then a variety of trucks that come up and pump off the bottom of the uh, 
covered hoppers. So I don't know if it's plastics or if it's it's a dry grain type materials. They're a great place to put the collection of, of scale trucks that you've purchased too. <laughs> yeah. Anybody yeah. else have any questions for Rich? So those transload facilities, are they usually owned by the railroad or yes. their own business? Yeah, they're they're railroad oriented. So if you looked up, if you did an internet search of transload facilities, CSX or BNSF transload facilities, you should be able to find some stuff on the internet about it. Uh, and most large cities have enough industries that, that don't have tracks by it, but need to, they want to receive or ship products by rail. And so they need the, the thing. So it used to be you just went to the factory. Well, now they set up transload facilities and, uh, and offload and load stuff you know, and many different things. So look it up by railroad, you know, BNSF transload facilities or locations and, uh, and go from there. So number is another popular item for transload facilities. Is what? Lumber. Yeah. Yeah. And the one at Claire is basically used in part as, and not just transload, but storage for the various companies. They can get their carloads of stuff up and then just leave it there until, you know, they need a truckload or two to, which helps great for smaller businesses. Yeah. I know Consumers Power, uh, now CMS Energy, it has a, uh, a pole loading yard, unloading yard there in Claire. Uh, where they take and bring in uh, poles uh, for utility operations are stored there and they come off. Yeah, we see a number of cars of those coming by on the local to be transferred to Ampere. Yeah. To Great Lakes Central. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope I gave you some ideas uh, today on, uh, on some things. And again, this, this whole thing was a, a series of uh, many presentations brought together in the one. But again, what inspired me to do it in the beginning was I had a lot of time on my hands driving, you know, uh, up to Bismarck, North Dakota to teach. And then looking at the layout uh, in uh, Coralville, Iowa, the Hawkeye uh, lines in that factory just really an, made me think about some things with all the doors on the side. And then going back to the Mexico, Missouri layout with the Ford motor plant, that's, you know, a two by four wide and, uh, but can do uh, several hours of operating stuff for people to look, to move those cars, pick up the cars, bring in the right ones and get them at the right doors because this car is full of batteries. This car is full of seats. This car is full of tires, you know, cause it's gotta be in the right place along the assembly line to be able to move it to, to where they need it to at the next point and then just in time concepts so yeah just a, a collection of things put together uh as i drive and make notes in the car and stuff like that and then add slides to it to, and put it into some order so but thanks for having me today well thank you right you're welcome to uh stick mm -hmm. around if you'd like or if you're busy you gotta go I well am i'm